To reflect upon our constitution in the year when we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the unification of Italy will help us first and foremost to link the 1948 constitution to the idea of patriotism. An intense debate took place at the Italian Cultural Institute as part of its vast institutional program in New York. The international conference focused on the unification of Italy and American independence in collaboration with Guido Carli School of Government of Luis in Rome. It's uh, interesting to uh, establish uh, and to uh, deepen uh, from a point of view of a narrative uh, the relation between uh, American and Italian thinker and how this uh, uh, relation ca uh, has influenced uh, one or the other. The special guest of the panel was the former ambassador of the U.S. to Italy, Richard Gardner, who talked about his personal and professional relationship with Italy. Luigi Barzini, years ago, once wrote, In the heart of every man, wherever he is born, whatever his education and tastes, there is one small corner of his heart that is Italian. <clears throat> now that's perhaps a bit of an exaggeration, but Luigi was given to exaggerations. But this remark is certainly true in my case. Sabino Cassese, judge of the Constitutional Court of Italy, gave a historical lecture about Italian constitutional architecture. In Italy, the driving force of the state, the executive, was weakened by its precariousness and this made it difficult to ensure the continuity of public policies. As a general conclusion, I shall remark that despite the great differences between them, the two Italian constitutions of 1848, which became only in 1861, the Italian constitution, and, uh, and the constitution of 1948, did not provide the country in this 150 years with an efficient or workable legal architecture. Professor John A. Davis stressed the importance of the connection between Italian thinkers of the Risorgimento and leaders of the United States, such as Filangieri and Franklin, while Professor Stephen Holmes gave a lecture about the Constitution and the main differences in its conception between the United States and Italy. Sergio Fabrini, director of the Luis School of Government, explained the changes and the revolution in Italian politics before and after the 90s, underlying the necessities of a debate on dualism in a country that is always struggling between domestic problems and European issues. Professor Filippo Sabetti from McGill University stated that the strength of Italian democracy is not its parliament, but in its foundations, a regionalist state. Judge Guido Calabresi, Sterling Professor Emeritus of Law at Yale University gave a speech about the Constitution, explaining why Americans consider it a sacred book. The only thing is that we do think of our Constitution as the sacred book. And so we go back to the words, Hugo Black, the justice I clerked for, always carried the Constitution in his pocket. And I do too, because it is the sacred book. Giulio Napolitano, professor at Roma Tre, and Giannicola Sinisi from the Italian Embassy in Washington spoke last. Napolitano talked about the achievements of the Italian Constitution compared with the Statuto Albertino and underlined how fundamental it is for social growth in Italy. I think we must recognize and we cannot forget what happened in Italy in the last 60 years under the rule of the Constitution. Peace and democracy were enhanced and defended. The greatest economic development in Italian history was achieved. Individual liberties and social rights were recognized and expanded at levels unknown in the past. While Sinisi reminded the audience about the role of Filangieri, Mazzei, and other thinkers of the unification of Italy. Professor David Kurtzer from Brown gave a quick lecture about Italian unification 
and the difficulty of creating a national identity for the Italian people. He even went on to analyze some of the problems Italy is facing nowadays, hoping in a better and brighter future. His last words were simple and effective. Viva l'Italia! <laughs>